Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to Wix Wiz. Today we are going to be creating an infinite scroll effect using a repeater and data collections and external data so that we create an experience like this for the user that no matter how much they scroll, new data is loaded to give them a seamless scrolling experience. So let's get started. Okay, so a bit about the setup that I have over here. Uh, first of all, we have a repeater, which I've named infinite repeater. And inside of the items, I have placed two uh, text items, which are linked to our mock data set. And this is a data set that's connected to a collection of about a thousand items. And at the moment, it's only displaying 12 of those items. And our goal is to make it so that no matter how much I scroll, there will always be more items, but I don't want to load a thousand items on my page initially. I want to load 12 and then keep on loading more as I scroll down. And we're going to be doing this in two ways. So first I'm going to be showing you how to do it using a data set, and then I'm going to show it using external data. So for the data set setup, what we're going to want to do is start by setting up the on item ready for our repeater. So let me zoom in here a little bit. So let's start off with our on item ready. So I'm selecting the repeater here and on item ready. This takes item, item data, and index. And we're actually going to be using index this time, which is rare for on item ready. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up a on viewport enter event listener for our individual items. So here we're going to use the item selector and we're going to say infinite item dot on viewport enter. And basically what we're going to want to do is that when we and the um, this certain item enters the viewport, so we're going to be selecting an item, let's say three or four from the end of this repeater. And when that item enters the viewport, we're going to load more items. So eventually what's going to happen is we're going to say a mock data set dot load more. Okay, this is what's going to happen eventually. Obviously, there's more that has to go in here to make this all work. So first of all, we're going to need to figure out at which index we're going to be loading this. And in order to do that, we're going to be using two uh, methods from the data set API. So if you take a look at the Velo reference, we can do two things. One is, well, you could do a lot of things here, uh, but the two that we're going to be using is get current page index. And it's important to note that this starts at one. Okay, so each time we load 12 items, that's considered a page. So initially there will be only one page, and then after we load more items, then there'll be two pages and three pages, etc. So that's how many pages we have. And the second thing we're going to need is the uh, page size. Okay, so how many items are included in a page? And this is that number that we set over here in the settings for our data set. Let me just show you that one more time. So here's our data set. And here in the settings, we set number of items to display 12. Okay, so that's going to be our page size. And you could just hard code that, but I prefer get it using code just to ensure that my code is dynamic. And if I make a change to the data set, then it'll change in my code as well without me having to make any changes. So I'm going to be declaring two global variables. So I'm going to say let page size. And let, what was the other one called? Uh, page index. Okay. I'm going to keep the naming similar to the uh, documentation. And what we're going to do is that as soon as our page uh, loads and our data set loads, then we're going to set these two values. So I'm going to say on a mock data set dot on ready. Okay, this ensures that my data set is ready and all the data is loaded. I'm going to say page size 
uh, page size equals to mock a data set dot uh, what was it called get page size and page index is equal to mock data set dot get page what was it called Where are you? Get current page index. Okay, get current page index. Okay, and then over here on the viewport enter, I'm going to do that again. Okay, so I'm going to set these again when, whenever we load more from the data set. Okay, and we need to now add the condition that we're only going to be doing this, we're only going to be setting this on viewport enter if the item it has an index that is equal to, let's say, three or four from the end. So I'm going to add a condition here that if index is not equal to page size, Page index times page size, let's say minus four, and I'm going to return. Okay, so we're not going to set everything uh, after here. Okay, and let's just add in some consoles here. So I'm going to add here console.log data set loaded. And I'm going to add here page size, page index. And I'm going to add another console in here. More loaded page size, page index, just so we can keep track of everything and see that everything is working correctly. So let's give this a spin. I'm going to zoom out and enter preview mode. And so you see the data set loaded 12, uh, 1. OK, so 12 is how many items we have in the page, and 1 is the current page. And now I'm going to scroll down. And we see here that that did not work. OK, so our, our, um, we did not load more from the data set. So let's go back to the editor. And let's see why this is not working. So let's add a console here with page index and page size. And let's see if we're even getting to this stage in the code. OK, so I'm going to go here into preview mode. and. No. OK, so we're not even getting to that stage in the code. And one of the issues might be is that this might be happening after this is happening. OK, so let's add a console over here. Uh, so I'm just going to say I'm running. Okay. Basically, I want to make sure that this is happening after this. Otherwise, it won't work. OK, because these values are only going to be set once this has already run. So let's go into preview mode. Yeah, so you see here that it's I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, and then the data set is loaded. So our issue is that our data set is being loaded after the on item uh, ready is running. OK, so the way we're going to solve that is by using something called on ready async. And basically, it changes the way that the on ready for the data set works from a callback function to async await. So you see here that I already have async uh, before my function. And all I need to do now is get rid of this callback function. 
and change this to on ready, on async ready, maybe it is, sorry. On ready async. Let me let me let me find exactly what it's called. It is called yeah, on ready async. Okay, right over here. And this is how it's used. So you say await data set on ready async, and then uh, you can use the data set things afterwards. So basically the way it's gonna work is that we have to remember the await key here. So now what this will do is it will stop the rest of the code for running until we do this. So basically there's no way that this will run before this. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of this console here. I'm gonna get rid of this console here and I'm going to change this to work in the same way. Okay, so I'm gonna select everything that we have here and I'm gonna change this to here and get rid of this and change this to an async function. And I know it says here that this property does not exist on data set, but that's not true. <laughs> so I'm not sure why it's throwing this error, but we're gonna see in a moment that this uh, should be working. So I'm gonna head back and go into preview mode. And I'm gonna zoom out. And you already saw that it was working. Okay, so I'm scrolling down and you see that as I kind of reach the end of the scroll, it is loading more each time. And you can see if you look here on the side, how this is getting smaller and kind of jumping as I'm scrolling down. And you see now that I've been scrolling for a while and we haven't had any issues. Um, if you think that, yeah, so if that happens, like when I scroll really fast, it kind of gets to the end and then it takes a second for it to load then you can choose an index that's a little higher up um, or just add some kind of loading screen or something like that here um, when that happens. Uh, but essentially we have created an infinite scroll. So now I'm gonna head back to the editor. And what I wanna do is I wanna create the same effect, but I don't want to use a data set. And the reason I don't want to use a data set is because I want to simulate a simulate a simulate a simulation. I want to simulate a situation where we maybe are getting data from an external uh, source, like an API or something like that, and how we would do it in that case. So I'm going to still be using our mock collection to simulate the data from the external uh, API. But essentially what we need to do is first, we're going to get our first batch of data from the uh, API. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to say const get external data. Let me zoom this in a little bit. And this will be equal to an async function and const uh, mock beta query result will be equal to await Wix data. And we didn't import Wix data yet, so I'm gonna do that right up here on top. Wix data query. And we're going to be querying the mock beta data set. I'm just going to make sure that's what I, uh, this collection is called. So I'm going over here. Whoops. That's annoying. And yeah, so you see here mock data. And that's the same thing that I have over here. So we're good and dot find. So this is gonna initially get 50 items. I'm gonna make it a little smaller. So I'm gonna add a limit here and I'm gonna limit it to 20. Okay, just because I want to kind of emphasize that this is working. 
Uh, so I want to make the page uh, size a little uh, smaller. OK, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say const mock beta is equal to mock beta query result dot items. And we're going to populate our repeater using this data. Uh, sorry, not a function. Okay, and then I'm just going to call this as soon as our um, as our page loads. But we need to change up a few things here because we're not going to be using our data set anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete our data set just that there's no doubt here that we're actually not using it. Zoom out. So I'm getting rid of this data set. Okay, delete. So now we need to set everything in the repeater using the data that we get from the query. So first of all, here in our on item ready for the repeater, I'm going to set item. And this I'm going to call first name. And this I'm going to call email. Okay, so item first name dot text will be equal to item data dot first name. Okay, this is the name of the field in the uh, data collection. And item email dot text will be equal to text equal to item data email. Okay, so that's first things first to make sure that we're actually populating the repeater with the data. And now we need to figure out again our page index and our page size. Okay, so in this case, we're going to do something a little different. So I'm going to say, first of all, I'm going to say let mock data appear. And I'm going to be getting rid of all of this. And what I'm going to do is as we load our mock data, I'm going to be assigning it to this variable. OK, so I'm going to say instead of assigning mock data to the items, I'm going to say that mock data is equal to make this lowercase mock data is equal to the spread in mock data and our items. Okay, so it's going to be equal to a new array with all of the new items. Let's make sure that mock data here is an array, otherwise we're going to run into issues. And then we can just use the length of mock data each time to decide when we're going to be loading more items. Okay, so here Instead of all of this, we're going to have if index does not equal to mock data dot length minus four, then we're going to return. And now we have to program our loading of more items. So in order to do that, we're going to say let mock mock data query result. So I'm going to be saving the query result as a variable as well. And then this is going to be out declaration. OK, so I'm assigning the value there instead. And then we're going to be using this from the API, which is next. OK, mock data query result um, dot next. And that essentially loads the next page from the query. OK, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say mock data query result equals await mock data query result dot next. OK, so I'm getting the next uh, result from the query, and I'm assigning it back to this original 
variable. And then I'm going to do these two actions again. And I think that that should be good. Let's add some tests in here. So I'm going to say, after we load this, let's console dot log mock data dot length. And I'm going to do the same thing here after we load more data. OK, just so we can keep track of what's going on over here. OK, so let's give this a spin. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and enter preview mode. OK, so I see here one, and I don't see any of our data loaded in here. So let's go back to our editor. And let me try and see what's going on here. So first of all, let's console.log mock data query result and see what's coming back from that initial uh, query. So I'm going to go here and go into preview. Cursor undefined. So items. OK, so we got back here 20 items. And let's add it. Let's check what mock data is equal to here. Ah, OK. So one uh, mistake that I see that I made already here is that I didn't spread in this as well, OK? Because this is also an array. So this needs to be spread in, OK? Essentially, what happened, and that's why we got mock data dot length equals 1 and our repeater didn't populate, because I had a repeater inside a repeater. Uh, so I had one repeater, which had one item, which was a repeater with all my results. Uh, and now, if we go back into preview mode, then uh, we can see 20, and we see that our data is being populated. So now let's double check that our infinite scroll is working. So I'm just going to be scrolling down here. And there we go. So it's a little slower than using the data set. You see that the data is taking a little longer to load. So if we want to fix that, we can just adjust a few things. So I'm going to try adjusting the uh, limit. So we're querying for less. And I'm also going to adjust when it loads. So I'm going to load it a little earlier. So let's say here at 6 instead of 4. And let's go into preview and see if this creates a slightly smoother effect. Not so much. So let's try loading more. So I'm going to load 30 items. And I'm going to make it load more much earlier. So let's say here at 15. Let's just go all the way up and scroll down. OK, so I think this is slightly better. Uh, obviously, if you're scrolling super, 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 super fast, then you can sometimes kind of beat this part of the code. Um, and then uh, you might want to create a situation where you know, if you reach some kind of item here on the bottom under the repeater, then it loads, uh, it loads more. Um, that's just a matter of how you want to program it. But the essentials are the same. Uh, using this on viewport enter in order to load more items from your data set. And here I used a query from the Wix data set and I used pagination. Okay, so I used dot uh, next based on the Velo API, but these same principles can be used 
when you're using your external API. So you make an initial call for the first page of data, and then you use whatever pagination system the API has in order to get the next set of data and attach it to the existing data and load more sequentially. So that is how to build an infinite scroll uh, using Wix and Wix data sets, queries, and external data. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thank you.